Good evening, everyone. I'm Kay Donaldson, Director of the Alabama Bass Trail Tournament Series, and this will serve as your official meeting for the fifth and final stop of the Alabama Bass Trail North Division to be held on Lake Gunnersville in Scottsboro, Alabama. I do want to send out a huge thank you to the Mountain Lakes Chamber of Commerce, as well as the City of Scottsboro and Goose Pond Colony for being our host this week. Uh, we are looking forward to being there. We're looking forward to topping off an amazing uh, 2022 season. Uh, looking forward to some big weights, a very, very tight Angler of the Year race, and seeing who's going to qualify not, for not only our no entry fee championship in October on Lake Jordan, but also those nine teams that are going to move on to uh, the Bass Team Championship uh, later on at Lake Hartwell. First, I would like to recognize our winners from back on uh, Wheeler Lake just a couple of weeks ago. Michael Hood and Randy Wiggins took home over $10,000 of Alabama Bass Trail money along with some contingency money out there. So congratulations to them. They punched their ticket uh, to move on to the championship. Uh, but I know they are also looking forward to another Tennessee River event. Also, our Garmin $500 Highest Finisher Award was uh, Tommy Ryer. And uh, Jeremy White, they took home the $500 Garmin Highest Finisher Award. Uh, Mark McKegg and Tim Hurst, they were our Wadawi Marine winners, $1,000 to the highest finisher there. And then Ryan Hall and Chad Hall took home $1,000 from Amherst for uh, financing their uh, office, their tournament office at Amherst. So uh, not only thank you to those guys for supporting our sponsors, but also those sponsors for continuing to support the Alabama Bass Trail and everything we do. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit before Scott comes on about what you can expect over the course of the next 30 days. Uh, there are a lot of decisions being made on the Alabama Bass Trail as far as uh, people who make it into the championship, people who are going to make it onto the Bass Team Championship. As you may know, we send the top nine teams to the Bass Team Championship and we pay your entry fees. Uh, we certainly would like to know in, in advance if you're going to be able to make that, because if not, we would like to go down to the next team. So if you think that uh, you might be in that range to make the top nine, we would like for you to stick around uh, after the weigh-in so we can talk to you just briefly about what we know and then let you know how you would go about getting registered for that event. Uh, right now, sitting in the lead, I think about eight points out, um, eight points ahead is Greg Lamb and David Powell. Sitting in second is Wesley Sams and Jordan Wiggins. Third place is Luke Kyle and Arch Cornette. Fourth place, Mitch Mitchell, Candler McCollum. Fifth place, Justin Lane and Luke Mason. Sixth place, Jamie Smith and Michael Raines. Seventh place, Benji Seaborn and Jonathan Seaborn. Eighth, actually a tie for eighth, Nolan Spencer, Jonathan Reese, and Jacob Davis and Chris Wages. Uh, if there is a tie going into the final day, if there is a tie for ninth place, the tiebreaker is the heaviest overall weight. So we would take up all of your weights through the five tournaments. We would determine who would be the um, um, who would be the ninth place team to go on to the Bass Team Championship. That is the same as it is for the Alabama Bass Trail Tournament Series. If there is a tie, right now we would go down to 79th place. So if there was a tie for 79th place, we would take those two teams, add up their weight throughout the year, and whatever team had the heaviest weight, that would be the team that got into the championship. So if there's any question about how we do that, that is how that is determined. Not that this will happen this year, but it has happened in the past where a team double qualified for the Bass Team Championship and for the Alabama Bass Trail Championship. That is determined by the, the division that they finish the highest. So let's say Kay Donaldson, Scott Dobbins, we finished second in the South Division and we finished fourth in the North Division. We go to the Bass Team Championship in the South Division and we bump down a spot in the North Division. Same way it operates with the Alabama Bass Trail Championship. If you double qualify in those, we take the division that you qualify at the highest. And then in the other division, we bump down one more spot. So it does take a minute to figure out who all has made it into the championship. We take out any high school teams that might have qualified in the regular points. We bump down a spot. Any student, uh, any couples that might have qualified in the regular uh, events in the points, we take them out. They qualify in the couples. So it takes a few days to kind of massage all that information. But we will let you know. Our deadline to let you know is July the 1st if you have made it.
Scotty, we lost Miss K, so let's go ahead. Did we Jim, lose Miss K? We lost Miss K, so. All right. Well, let's do this, Chris. Let's go ahead and uh, start looking at our Goose Pond presentation and go over our logistics. And hopefully Miss K will be back soon and we will uh, pick her up where we left off and she can finish her little deal after I go over all of my information. Sure. <clears throat> all right, guys. Uh, as always, we start off with Mr. Chris's phone number here. He's got all of your information as far as what we're trying to do TV wise. You have that phone number in your phone, 901-493-0437. So any questions with camera, uh, if you want to request a camera, all that information uh, needs to be directed to Chris at uh, EnglishChannel.com, who, who is taking care of our TV stuff. Okay, next slide. Uh, rules overview. As always, uh, I'm going to read our protest rule out loud. Uh, protests must be made in writing within 15 minutes of the official closing of the scales at each tournament. Any written protest must be provided to the tournament director in writing within said time period. If a protest is not made in writing within the required 15 minute time period, the contestant waives his or her right to submit a written protest. All right, next slide. All right, welcome to Lake Gunnersville. Uh, boat check will start at 2.30. Uh, if you're gonna come by water, our check-in is by the flashing lights on the dock behind Goose Pond Bait and Tackle. Uh, safety first as always, anytime your big motor is running, you must be wearing your Coast Guard rated PFD even in practice and pfds must be worn uh at nick jack dam or any dam for that matter inside the posted signs and this 800 foot mark there at nick jack uh, please follow all posted water control signs and buoys pfds are required at the dams uh, we're going to try and blast off about 5 15. Uh, we had uh, perfect weather this past weekend at neely henry and i think we left out about 5 13 5 14 somewhere in that range so we're going to stick with our 5 15 time period as our estimated blast off time uh first flight is due in at 2 p.m when weigh-in starts all right guys we are 15 inches on largemouth 15 inches on smallmouth 12 inches on spotted bass if you fish tennessee waters make sure if you catch a small mouse up there it has to be uh, 18 inches and you can only keep one Okay, let's look at our logistics slide for Goose Pond here. Uh, you'll notice this slide has not been updated. We don't have an accurate up to date with the with the new ramp, but nothing really changes as far as uh, the logistics of what we're doing uh, coming in, leaving, all that kind of stuff stays the same. Uh, the only difference is uh, all these grass areas you're seeing on the slide are now paved parking. There's plenty of parking here, so we shouldn't have an issue uh, and plenty of ramp space. Uh, along with a little bit better uh, dock over here that's not uh, up to date on this photo. So once you come in, uh, once right there on the curve to turn in in front of bait and tackle, that's where our boat check will be. Uh, once you uh, go through boat check, you guys do not have to do a uh, launch pass, $2 launch pass launch fee uh, on tournament day. Uh, you are required and you are responsible for those on your practice days. But on tournament day, that launch fee is waived for the ABT tournament. So uh, we'd like for you to go ahead and try to rig as much as you can ahead of time. So that once you come through boat check, we'll open two lanes up there going to, down to the ramp. Uh, my guys will be directing you in. Uh, Frank's always at the ramp showing you which lane to back down. Uh, and we'll get you parked after that. Please uh, make sure that you are watching and listening for instructions once you come up the ramp. Uh, we're going to park you in the best scenario we can so that you guys have uh, the most available parking spaces. Nobody's trying to get blocked in. Uh, my guys do a great job uh, getting you where you need to be so that everybody has access to their boat and can get in and out, um, you know, quickly in the afternoons. So this is not a trailer weigh in. Do not put your boat on the trailer before you weigh your fish. Tie up at the dock, come weigh your fish, then trailer your boat. Uh, we'll have the first six or eight spots there in front of where the trailer sits. We'll have that blocked off. That's where Ms. K's camper running live and Chris's inf information and trailer and all his team set up uh, to make TV. Once everybody's launched that morning, we'll block that area off so we don't have traffic running between the parking lot and the stage. Uh, and you guys will access the ramp uh, from the west side uh, when you're taking out in the afternoon. Uh, and you'll be exiting uh, down past the pool. You see the sign there showing you which way to come out and you'll loop back around. Again, plenty of parking here. It should not be an issue. Uh, 
<clears throat> the little parking area across the street that is off limits. Uh, there'll be cones up and do not park here signs. That is for marina and boat owners on the opposite side of the causeway only. Do not park in there. There's plenty of parking on the ramp side of the road. It extends all the way out past the pool, all the way out in front of the restaurant. Uh, and if we have overflow, we obviously go on the road if we need it, but we shouldn't be an issue uh, at this tournament. Off limits, you'll see, uh, this kind of just makes an arc uh, from just outside uh, both sets of docks behind bait and tackle to the new dock outside the ramp. Uh, that will be off limits as always where we release fish and tie our boats up. Uh, blast off and check-in boat will be a pontoon boat and will be just outside the no wake buoys. Uh, we'll stage right behind bait and tackle up against the causeway and around the dock space there. Uh, and we'll idle out uh, when it's getting close to your time for your flight. We'll idle out to our blast off and check-in boat. Again, it will be a pontoon boat and we, we may be doing some TV out there again like we did last week. But, uh, you know, that we'll figure that out a little closer to time. But please remember that we're going to idle completely past the boat uh, before we get on plane. Uh, water check in. You'll see it's, it's uh, on the nearest, on the end nearest the ramp from the big T dock behind bait and tackle. Uh, really, really good setup here. Lots of space. Uh, nice big ramp. Uh, but guys, we deal with this issue quite often, almost every tournament. Uh, it, it's very difficult uh, for our team to get folks in the water when they don't show up until uh, 4 30. You know, a 5 15 blast off that's not very much time and, and it gets backed up and everybody's in a scramble. Uh, we're there almost three hours prior to the blast off time. So that's plenty of time for you to get your boat in the water. Uh, relax, take, some, take it easy, get retired, whatever you need to do. Uh, get ready to take off at appropriate time. Please don't show up in the last 30 minutes and expect to pull right up to the ramp. Uh, it gets really, really crowded, uh, you know, during that last hour. So allow yourself some extra time. And as always, obviously you are welcome to put in at a different ramp. Uh, you just need to let me know by five o'clock on Friday, your boat number and that you plan to come by water. All right, next slide. Here's my number, 256-309-9852. Everybody should have that in your phones already. <clears throat> in an emergency situation, always call 911 first and then only when safe to do so, either call myself or Kay. She's 256-303-7905. And after the weigh-in starts at 2 p.m., you will have to call Kay because I turn my phone off once I'm on stage. As I spoke, as I spoke about before, if you are coming by water or using an alternate, please text message me uh, by Friday at 5 p.m. Uh, you'll get your uh, boat, boat number assignment on Thursday at 7. Uh, that gives you almost a full 24 hours to get that information to me. Uh, don't text me at 9 o'clock on Friday night and say I'm coming by water. Uh, all those fobs have already been taken care of. The information has been sent to for our folks who are making TV so that we can get cameras designated either on the dock or at boat check. Uh, it is a tremendous hassle when folks don't do what they were asked to do and show up at the wrong place and expect to get their fobs. Guys, you got to let us know uh, by Friday at five so that we can get situated and set up for Saturday morning. And the way we want to do that, it's very simple. If you're using an alternate, just send me a boat number, boat 226 using an alternate and say Donaldson fishing for Dobbins. Or if you are coming by water, I don't even need names. I just need a boat number, boat 226 coming by water. That way I can get the list to Mr. Chris and we can get everybody situated and put in the right place to have a, a smooth transition and blast off on Saturday morning. Any questions, concerns, or comments, obviously uh, we can post those here on uh, Facebook. Myself or Kay will get back to um, those questions as quickly as we can, either um, may not be tonight, but we'll answer them whenever we can. Uh, again, uh, you guys have done a, a much better job on my end. I'm not sure about with Miss Kay, but uh, the number of phone calls that are coming in at nine and 10 o'clock at night, and four and five o'clock in the morning, have, you guys are doing better with that and trying to do stuff in the normal, um, in a normal time frame and office hours. And I, I know that's uh, especially difficult for Kay. Her phone rings about twice as much as I does, as mine does, and mine's a lot. So I can imagine uh, how, many, how many times a day hers rings and 
let's just be courteous and considerate of her and try to do it during normal business hours. It looks like she might be back up online there and she's got a few more things on her end that she wants to talk about. Uh, and I'll, I'll segue into one of those. Uh, I, I know that she's going to discuss this uh, and she's got a list. I'm not sure where it is on her list, but um, we will talk about guys. You're not supposed to be looking at your phone and watching live. Uh, getting information during the tournament times. And I, I'll let her cover that. Uh, and if there's any other questions, um, I'll say uh, right here, I see I missed boat check start time. Uh, my guys, we've got it scheduled to start at 2.30, but we'll probably be there by 2.15 ready to roll. And I right, see that Mr. Uh, Ricky Thompson asked that question. That's because he's always number one at boat check. He's always exactly the first right. one through the line. So. Um, I do want to cover a couple other things before I get into what Scott said. Um, again, I just want you to understand how we go about uh, working with our Alabama Basketball Championship and the Bass Team Championship. I don't want there to be any uh, anyone who is misled about how you get into our championship. There is not a uh, entry fee, so you don't have to worry about that. If you make it, you're automatically in. Uh, but there will take some time in deciding who all gets in. And the reason I say July the 1st is because we do have uh, the South Division on June the 18th, and we do have multiple teams fish in both divisions, so it's a possibility we have people who double qualify, and we want to give everyone the most opportunity to get in as we can. So that's why I say please give us to July the 1st, and we will notify you via email uh, that you have made it, and we will have, uh, provided nothing else happens uh, on the COVID front, we will have a standard Alabama Bass Trail Championship meeting at Lake Jordan, so just heads up on that. No need to start calling and fussing or texting and fussing, that will happen, so just let you know that. I do wanna remind you, June the, uh, June the 11th, uh, it is going to be quite a warm day, so you need to prepare for fish care. Make sure you have your G-juice. If you put uh, ice in bottles that cool your uh, live wells, please make sure you've done that. We did a podcast today with Gerald Swindle and he talked about disinfecting your live wells, making sure that you've cleaned those before you go to another body of water. Make sure that you've done all of that to give yourself a chance at winning uh, this tournament. We've seen in the past dead fish penalties are crucial. And Gerald actually mentioned on the podcast that that could be a, um, you know, kind of a death sentence at the Alabama Bass Trail on Lake Gunnersville this, this weekend because it is going to be hot. Um, and uh, you're going to need to make sure that you hydrate as well as keep your fish safe there. So if you need ice bottles, you know, go ahead and put those in the freezer now. Make sure that you are not putting tons of ice in there because it, it does contain a lot of chlorine, which does make those fish kind of seize up and, and put them into stress. So please make sure that you're doing everything you can do uh, and don't bring them to us on a stretcher. So also remember that the uh, tanks or the bump sink opens one hour prior to official weigh in time, which will be 1 p.m. this weekend. So you can bring your fish to the bump sink at 1 p.m. and Mark will take care of bumping those fish for you. Um, that is, uh, I think that will be crucial for uh, fish care for this weekend. Also, talking about Angler of the Year, I just want to mention this. An Angler of the Year overall is an $8,800 uh, cash and prize bonus, $5,000 cash, $1,300 entry fee for the next year, as well as a $2,500 Garmin bonus package. Um, also, the runner-up Angler of the Year in the other division who, would, who does not claim Angler of the Year, it's a $6,300 bonus cash and prizes. The $2,500 cash, $1,300 entry fees, plus a $2,500 Garmin package. So there is a reason to be fighting for Angler of the Year in the Alabama Bass Trail. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is something that Scott touched on just briefly. I want to make sure that uh, you understand that at the beginning of the year, you read, you signed that you read and understood the rules. And we assume that that's what you did. But uh, I have been, uh, it's been made uh, brought to my attention that there may be a couple of rules that that people may not understand, um, and that is getting information. You are not allowed to use your cell phone during the tournament or during official practice to get information. Uh, you need to make sure that that includes you cannot call someone who is in the tournament and say, hey, man, have you called them? Are y'all on them? Man, you need to go here. You need to go there. That is illegal, and it is a reason for an immediate disqualification. If you have done that, then you are in violation of an Alabama Bass Trail rule. If you know of someone who has done that and you've not brought it to our attention and protested them, then that's on you. Scott and I are two people and we are extremely busy in the mornings. So if you know of this going on and you're not and you're not helping police it, then you're part of the problem. So either 
bring it to our attention and protest them and we'll stop it. But if we don't know it's happening during the time that you're allowed to protest, then we can't do anything about it. But I'm telling you right now that if you want to continue to fish the Alabama Bass Trail, it'd be a good time to stop it if you've done it in the past. The next thing, you cannot watch ABT live while you are fishing an Alabama Bass Trail event. It is getting information on fishing using a cellular device, which is in violation of a rule. You cannot watch a live weigh-in while you are on the water fishing an Alabama Bass Trail event. You can watch a leaderboard, but you cannot watch a live, leader, live weigh-in or ABT live on the water. If you've done that in the past, it is a violation. You're lucky someone hasn't seen you and turned you in. Uh, so stop. We would love for you to go back and watch it once you come off the water, but it is an it, it is a violation to watch it while you are on the water. Uh, so I am just telling you now, if you've uh, escaped without someone turning you in and you've been doing that, then you're lucky, but uh, it won't last. So uh, that's my warning to you. It is an immediate disqualification and could be a disqualification from the Alabama Bass Trail overall. So that is going to be my warning to you on those. Uh, and as far as the information rule, I want to cover that because it seems to be some uh, questions as to what our, our rule is. You cannot get information from anyone after official practice go, starts. Uh, you cannot discuss it amongst people that are in the group. You can't have somebody get in your boat and show you how to go a place after official practice. You cannot barter, solicit, or purchase information. You cannot hire a guide. Uh, if you are in a tackle store and people are talking, you can't control that. Uh, but if you go in there and say, hey, man, uh, I'm, I've been struggling. Can you tell me what they're biting? That is against the rule. So if you've been doing that, that's against the rule. It just takes someone to protest you and us to polygraph you to see if you can pass that polygraph. Um, make sure that you've read and understood the rules. There's 29 of them. Uh, be sure that you have done that. Uh, the next thing I'm going to cover is we everyone who's in that top nine should expect a camera and a device on your boat on Saturday morning. Uh, I'll let this serve as letting you know that. So when you get to the boat ramp, you don't have to ask. You know if you're in the top nine in points, you will have a camera going into uh, Gunnersville. We will have some additional tracking devices put out on the water. That is not to for us to go back and fish your holes. That is simply for us to be able to do a live show and create a good TV show from this tournament. So. Just an update on that. Uh, once you come off the water, that tracker's handed in. We delete that information. Nobody sees that other than the people that we have out on the water who are trying to locate you and do a TV show. Uh, I will tell you that if you decide that you're going to leave that in a truck back at the parking lot, that is a reason for disqualification. And I can see it. And I know whose it is and what boat it belongs to. So I encourage you not to do that. You cannot tamper with it, cut it off, or anything else. So I can see that as well when it is turned off. So I can see the battery life on it. I know exactly how long the battery life should last. So therefore, you know that uh, I wouldn't tamper with that. I wouldn't leave it in your truck and I would not turn it off. That is a immediate disqualification. So now that we've covered the things that have been bugging us over the past few hours, uh, I'm going to see if there's any other questions that you would like for us to Answer, uh, we will be there around 2.15 to get started. Blast off is set to be at 5.15. We got out of there really quickly last weekend at Lake Gunner, at Lake Neely Henry, and we look forward to doing that at Lake Gunnersville. So this is gonna be a, a really fun tournament. We are excited to see how the points shake out, uh, excited to um, move on uh, to the, the championship and get these people qualified and get ready for Lake Jordan later on. But uh, if you do have any questions and you would like to ask those, please make sure that you post them in the comments. If it's something you'd like to talk about privately, you can always reach Scott or I during regular business hours. We'll be working all week. So please make sure that you do that. If you have any questions about any of the other rules or need those clarified, uh, I would instruct you to talk to Scott first. He is your tournament director. Uh, but if you cannot get in touch with him, I'm happy to discuss that with you. Uh, but Scott is your tournament director and he's the one who will be um, task to enforce those rules. So unless there's anything else, Mr. Scott, uh, I think we're done with tonight's uh, live meeting for Lake Gunnersville. We will see you at Goose Pond on Friday, if not before then. Y'all have a good evening. Thank you so good much. Good luck, everybody. Good luck.